Hi everyone, my name is Jake and today I'd like to share tool tips and tricks on creating perspective backgrounds for your comics. This video will cover tips and advice on perspective tools, utilizing grids, and other useful tips to consider, all of which can be accomplished in Clip Studio Paint. For other videos and tutorials on the topic, check out the links in the description. So let's talk about perspective. We're going to assume you already have some basic and practical knowledge of perspective, such as horizon lines and vanishing points. To sum up, perspective in art can be broken up to three types, one point, two point, and three point perspective. One point perspective, or single point perspective, is when objects are vanishing into the distance in only one direction, or at a single vanishing point, and is by far the easiest perspective to achieve. Two point perspective is when there are two vanishing points, used to achieve more depth and three dimensionality. And three point perspective, though the most rarely used, utilizes three vanishing points, and it is optimal for such things such as looking high up or straight down. There are two ways you can make a perspective ruler layer. To create a ruler from default, go to Layer, Ruler Frame, Create Perspective Ruler. You'll see a pop-up that will ask you if you want one, two, or three point perspective. Select one of the options and hit OK. If you're working directly in a panel, the tool will automatically size down to the size of the panel. To create a custom perspective using the Perspective Ruler, go to your Ruler tool and find the Perspective Ruler tool. Below that is a drop-down menu labeled Process. Since we're creating a new perspective layer, make sure Add Vanishing Point is selected. Drag two lines and the intersection will become your vanishing point. You've just made one point perspective. If you want to create two point or three point perspective, repeat the process to add additional vanishing points. You can adjust the rulers after you've placed them. You can do this by selecting the Operation tool and clicking the lines directly. You can manipulate the location of the vanishing points and even twist the horizon line for a more dynamic angle. Once you've made your placements, take your favorite brush and start drawing either directly on the ruler layer or on a separate layer. Your strokes will automatically draw along the guidelines as long as the ruler is enabled. If you want to switch back to freehand, you can toggle the ruler layer off or you can hit shift left click on the ruler icon and it will hide the ruler. You can also toggle each perspective point by clicking on the diamond shapes with the object tool, and you will know it's toggled off when a line is struck through the diamond. Now let's talk a little bit about grids. Grids are great for adding a sense of scale and distance, and there are multiple ways you can enable and utilize grids. When you have your perspective ruler mapped out, select your operation tool and click on your ruler. In the tool property window, you should see a new set of grid options. Here you can toggle different grids on and off and even adjust the grid size to fit your needs. Grids also act as rulers, so drawing onto them will snap your lines to them. This function isn't limited to brushes. You can also use the figure tool to draw out shapes that will snap to the perspective ruler. So now that we have the tools down, let me share some advice on how to utilize them effectively. First and foremost, don't be afraid to use references. Whether it's photos of real places or 3D renders, it's really useful in mapping out your vanishing points for particular angles you want, especially when you're practicing. If you're new to drawing backgrounds or just want to practice perspective, find a photograph and start mapping out lines with the shapes you can find. Then when you're ready to make your own backgrounds, a useful trick is to create a rough top-down blueprint of the room or area. Then use the transform tool to line up the image along the perspective grid. Since you've already mapped out where objects are placed, you can then use the ruler to flesh it out. You can use this transform tool to line up just about anything to the ruler as you see fit, like posters or family pictures on the wall. There are even additional graphics you can find in the asset store that can make perspective gridding easier, such as spacing and other grids. What's really wonderful about Clip Studio is that all these tools are available by default and there's a large library of tools made by users for users, all available in the Clip Studio Asset Store. Although I believe ultimately the tools don't make the artist, Clip Studio makes the comic creating process incredibly streamlined and user-friendly for beginners and masters alike. I hope you found this video helpful and I wish you luck on your comic journey. Thank you for watching and until next time.